Welcome to my tutorial uh, for implementing a digital scoreboard style display in Unreal uh, Engine uh, using just the widget, a material, and a custom blueprint. Uh, there are two big pieces to this. The one is the piece where uh, getting widgets to render to uh, arbitrary material uh, rather than to the screen. And the second part is the actual material to create the uh, scoreboard style effect. I'd like to give a special thanks to Commander Shepard, uh, Scarecrow, formerly Crow87, Magneto, and Kerosene350 on the Unreal forums uh, for providing the information to get the widgets to render to uh, arbitrary materials. Uh, the material itself is based on uh, one of my prior Unity proofs of concept that I've uh, ported over to Unreal. So without further ado, uh, let's get stuck in. So I'm starting out here with just a blank first-person map project. Uh, you can start with however you like, and we're just going to start by setting up our new um, widget blueprint that is going to be what we're going to be displaying on our scoreboard. And we'll just have the blank uh, canvas here for creating our UI. Uh, one of the first things uh, you're going to want to do is set your uh, size custom for, uh, I'd recommend just using whatever the destination size of your display is going to be. So in this case, we'll just do a 800 by 600 uh, display. Um, Further, we're going to go ahead and add a canvas panel, and that automatically gets resized, so that's good. And then we'll just add a couple of images here. Um, now we'll make that a little smaller. Maybe. Push it out a little here. Okay, we'll go in. I've just brought in this uh, nice little logo to use here. And we'll just add some text to make it look like an actual scoreboard. Uh, <clears throat> Font size just a little bit smaller. And we'll get that position how we want. And of course, you would lay this out a lot better for your case. So this is our nice little um, okay, scoreboard widget here. Nothing really special about it. So our next step is going to be to create an actor blueprint and go ahead and get a couple components set up on it so that we can get our uh, new widget uh, actually displaying in the 3D world. So we'll go ahead and create a new blueprint. Go ahead and name it. Open it up. And we'll start out here by adding a widget component. And what this does is this will allow you to display a uh, widget that you've created in 3D space. If you come down here to the widget class property, uh, you can select our scoreboard widget, and you'll see it pop up. 
uh, assuming that you've uh, compiled uh, the uh, scoreboard widget already. Uh, it's always important to keep constantly compiling things under Unreal. Um, so at this point, we should be able to pop over here and we should be able to drop an instance of this in our world. Let's go ahead and put it Rotate it for our convenience here. And we'll go ahead and yeah, we'll just move it so that's more in the center of things. Okay, yeah. Um, see, obviously, there's some things like the uh, draw size would need to be adjusted and, and, and things like that. That's uh, very easily done over here and actually yes, we should make this draw size match uh, the <clears throat> what we set in the widget for our screen size earlier uh, that will be uh, kind of important because this uh, determines the size of the rendered texture that will be created so now that we've done that uh, let's go ahead you know we don't really want you know the, the intended effect isn't just to have this floating in midair it's to have it you know rendered like as a scoreboard looking like individual dots uh, on a display so we'll go ahead and we'll add a, a static mesh cube and we did not want it attached to the widget necessarily um, <clears throat> Go ahead and name that, and we will scale this cube uh, quite dramatically. Oh, yeah. So we want to make it eight meters by six meters by eight meters, and we will translate it um, upward by three meters so that essentially the uh, origin is at the base of it. Uh, generally a good idea for these things. And we'll go ahead and save. And now we should be able to see, yes, that in our uh, world here. So obviously we have more work to do to get uh, our scoreboard display uh, up on our cube that we're using as kind of a jumbotron uh, and even more work to get it to look like individual uh, bulbs lighting up on the jumbotron. So our next step in that is to create a material. And we'll go ahead and open this up. Now we're not going to worry about the light bulb effect just at this moment. We're just going to keep things simple. We're going to add a fixture sample parameter. And we're just going to hook it up directly to our emissive channel for now. Um, you know, since light bulbs emit, uh, since, you know, lighted scoreboards, lighted displays emit light. So that makes sense. Uh, and that's really all we need here right now. Next, we need to take our, um, our blueprint for our scoreboard and we need to use it to set up, uh, kind of associate the material with the, uh, render texture. Um, and yeah, to do that, first of all, I have it on good authority that we need a delay in here. Uh, the delay uh, should be able to be reduced. I actually haven't tested to see what um, what it could be reduced to. Um, and then 
what we're going to do is we're going to uh, bring our static mesh into here and we're going to create a dynamic material instance basically instantiate the material uh, that our um, yeah, that our scoreboard widget is using and for our material we're going to use our scoreboard material and you know, also at the same time from our widget component we need to extract the render target from it. And then once we've done that, we can take and set our texture, essentially set our, uh, our render target texture onto this new material that we've created. <clears throat> If I start with the pin here, there we go. It's often not easy to find things. Uh, like that and we'll make sure we use the correct parameter, the parameter name from our material and then once we've done that we will set this as the static meshes uh, material. <clears throat> Remember to hook that up. Okay, clean that up a little bit. The wires get kind of crossed very easily around here. Uh, all compiles good so that's good like that so now we do need to come over here and we need to take our I guess that's in here we need to take our scoreboard and we do need to associate our scoreboard material with it. And that looks all ugly and everything. Uh, but now you can see when we start playing uh, or simulating uh, now our widget is being rendered onto this cube and let's go ahead we can so we don't lose our point of view all the time we can just go ahead and simulate from here out um, but yeah So that part is now working, uh, but there's still some things to do. One thing you see that our widget is still actually rendering uh, in the 3D world on its own. Uh, this is very easy to fix. Um, 
Some people recommend scaling down the widget to zero. Um, that's not necessary uh, either. There's a real simple setting in the advanced rendering settings, uh, render in main pass. You uncheck this, and voila. So the last and probably the most complicated step of this whole process is to modify our material so that the uh, scoreboard display, the pixels within it, actually look like individual, uh, individual lights. So to do that, we'll need to go into our scoreboard material. And <clears throat> one thing I know we need to do is we need to convert this parameter uh, over to an actual uh, texture object parameter. So we'll just go ahead and delete that. <clears throat> and the reason for that is in order to do the effect where we take a, each individual pixel in this base texture and kind of render it uh, as a, you know, kind of like a round circle with a, with like a fall off, um, is we need that this material needs to be aware of the dimensions of the source image. Now that's not quite trivial uh, in uh, Unreal, um, in Material Graph. Uh, it requires a little bit of custom code. So we'll go ahead and add that custom uh, node now. Uh, <clears throat> So our output type is going to be a float2. Uh, our inputs is going to be a texture object. Uh, for object. <clears throat> Go ahead and connect up now. And then for this code, we'll need to enter a magical string, a little bit of direct uh, shader code here. <clears throat> Pull from our input named texture object get dimensions in x in y because output parameters are cool uh, not really try not to use output parameters <clears throat> and we'll And if you've done it right, you'll just get a big yellow square in there because it's just going to return you a, a 2D, you know, a, uh, a vector 2D basically with the um, red and green components set like really high, like way above one. So uh, that's what we expect. So <clears throat> uh, next we need to do some math. Uh, basically what we want to do here is we want to, we don't want to sample the actual UV coordinate that we've been given. Uh, we want to essentially sample the center of the pixel that is within that. Uh, so <clears throat> what we'll do We'll bring in our texture coordinate and we'll start out by multiplying it by our dimensions.
uh, <clears throat> and then we will need to so truncate it to an integer and we'll need to add 0 0.5 to it. So that will bring us to the center of the texel. Now, we need to go two different ways here. One, uh, we need to use this to sample our texture. Two, we need to also use this value to calculate a fall off as you know, kind of we get further from the center of the pixel. So uh, we'll do the, uh, I guess, the texture sample first. Uh, doesn't matter, matter either way. Um, so we'll start out, you know, we multiplied before. Now we need to divide back out our dimensions. Here's our texture sampler. There we go. This becomes the UVs. Our texture is way back over here. And we've still got more work to do, so you get shoved off to the right some more. Okay, so we've sampled our texture. Now we're not quite ready to hook that up yet because we've still got to calculate the fall off for the, um, for, the, for the color. So that as you get further from the center of the pixel, it's going to be dimmer. So you'll get kind of a circular uh, like light bulb effect. And this part, uh, I am just doing this really simple uh, right now. I'll probably enhance it myself for my purposes. Uh, you yeah, know, you can do whatever you want for the fall off in here. I'm just going to do a similar, simple linear fall off. You can use quadratic, cubic, you know, you can play with the normals, uh, what, whatever you want to do. Uh, but for the purposes of this, we'll just keep it simple. So we need to know the difference between uh, the, you know, our texture coordinate we we're given and our calculated center of pixel texture coordinate. So we'll code that as a simple subtract. And now we need, we have a vector. We need to take the length of that vector. I'd love to know what went into designing this like this, where it had like vector three and vector two inputs and outputs. That seems kind of like a disaster waiting to happen. But. Okay, so we have our vector length. Um, <clears throat> probably we don't need this ABS in here. Um, I had it in my original, but yeah, our vector length should already be positive. Uh, so, and then we'll want to, since it's going to be in the range of 0 to 0 0.5, we'll just multiply it by 2. Yeah, I'll probably optimize out that ABS operation, but uh, let's want to make sure this works for now. Uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, essentially, you know, we want to invert this value that that we have. So, um, it's like if it, yeah, right now zero would be, yeah, you know, it'll it'll give us zero for the exact center of the pixel and one for like the, it'll actually like. 1.4 or whatever for the for the edge of the uh, texel, um, but what we what we want is we want that inverted. So we'll do put another subtract in here, and it's one minus our value. 
Okay, so now we have our fall off. We have our sampled uh, pixel. Now we just need to multiply those together. RGB from that, and that from that. And then we finally connect back up to our emissive color. Now, if we've done this all correctly, we should be able to come over here and simulate and see nothing. So, I uh, took a couple minutes to find my mistake. Let's see if you can spot it out there in the audience. It's a good instructive opportunity. Give you a hint, somewhere in here. And if you guess that I did not correctly subtract here, that would be correct. I accidentally subtracted the divided uh, amount that already had the dimensions uh, taken out. And you see, as soon as I connect that pin, that looks a lot more like we were uh, going for there. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now we can see immediately the results here. Now, maybe 800 by 600 was a little too high of resolution uh, for that. Uh, that is easily fixed. Um, now here's something to, to note with this. Okay, so we've made this, uh, you know, we've now, now made the draw size 400 by 300, so now it's going to be 400 pixels by 300 pixels across. But if we do not adjust our widget, you see it just partially renders. It just renders the top left part of it. So along with that, we do need to come in here and readjust really quick. And now you can see our nice scoreboard effect. Take and we zoom way up close. You can see each individual pixel uh, in our widget has been rendered as a circle like all like uniformly well shaded but a yeah, uh, circle of one color so yeah uh, that's it for my little tutorial uh, hope uh, you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. And we'll see you next time.